friends, it's Deanna here. Welcome to our tutorial today. We are doing Ellie and Max Good Sport Tank. And it's such a cute tank um, for working out, for just around the house, for having fun. And you can dress it up, you can dress it down, and it, it's so cute. And uh, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, but before we get started, I just wanted to um, ask you guys to please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. And at Ellie and Mac, we have been doing a monthly giveaway. And um, every new subscriber is entered to our giveaway for a $50 Ellie and Mac gift certificate. So go ahead and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet so you can enter yourself to win that prize. And you could be winning a $50 Ellie and Mac gift certificate to get all these awesome patterns for free. So I hope that you go ahead and subscribe if you haven't um, and comment on one of our videos that you did subscribe and that will enter you to win the gift certificate and we'll be doing a drawing monthly. So subscribe and comment. And while you're at it, go ahead and give us a like. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the pocket. If you're not doing a pocket, obviously you can skip this step, but I am doing a pocket. Um, so I'm grabbing my pocket and I'm putting it right side up. This is my one side. I have obviously two sides of the pocket. Sorry, I'm putting my um, stuff over here, my um, pattern piece where I'm going to look and see where my pocket goes. And so then I'm going to grab my other pocket and I'm putting it right side on top of it. And I am going to pin the edges and I am going to sew around the edges leaving a two inch gap where I'm going to turn the pocket around. So when I'm gonna leave a two inch gap, I just kind of put the pins facing uh, the, the, the different way, kind of facing up. So I know, okay, that's where I'm stopping. Um, so I'll start there and I'll stop there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a search stitch. You can do, a, um, do it on your sewing machine. It really is up to you. I just like to use my serger. So that's why I do it on my but it's really up to you, whichever way you like to do it. All I'm doing is I'm just stitching along those edges. All the way around. To put that pocket together. Today I'm wearing the 90s dress. I love this dress so much. One of my favorite. Um, I do have the sew along for this dress. This specific dress is on the here as a sew along on the or YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Where I do the lace uh, overlay. All right, I'm going to trim this a little bit. Make sure when you're trimming not to cut the edge of the fabric because you don't want it to have a hole on your pocket. So now I'm going to go ahead and go right here, the gap that I left, and I'm going to turn it right side out. All the way. And I am using this little ruler thingy to do my edges. Um, you can do it with, sometimes I use a ruler, sometimes I use a like the cap of a pen, whatever, to pick, poke out those edges so that they are, are nice and um, straight. And then I'm gonna go ahead and after I do that, I'm going to steam and I'm going to top stitch the, uh, the curved edges. So I'm gonna show you in a minute. Because when you attach your pocket to your front piece, you will not be um, stitching on the sides on the curved edges you will only be stitching on the top on the on the flat edges and on the bottom so you might want to go ahead and top stitch over here already on your uh, curved edges and you can stop you can top stitch stop stitch you can top stitch with your sewing machine you can do a straight stitch uh, with your sewing machine I have a cover stitch so I'm gonna go ahead and do that my iron turned off. So anyway, just steam it really good. Uh, make sure you poke all those edges. I didn't really poke this one very good, so I'm going to do it a little bit more so it's nice and straight. There we go. And make sure that edge, that two inch gap you left open, go ahead and tuck it under 
Um, if you can see, I just tucked it in there, and then when I when I go to attach it to my uh, actual top, it will uh, when I sew it on, it will be shut, sewn shut. So let me go ahead and top stitch the pocket at the edges, and then we'll attach our pocket on. All right, friends, my pocket sides are top stitched right here along the edges. Look at these birds. This is so cool, isn't it? I'm excited about it. And here's my front piece, so I'm laying it straight up, face up on my fabric, on my fabric, on my mat, and I'm grabbing my pattern piece. And now what you can do is if you want, you can go ahead and cut a hole where your pocket's gonna fit. You need to make sure that is the right color line for your uh, measurements. Um, and then that's where you're going to do it. So I'm gonna place it right on top of my pattern piece um, and I'm going to align it on that color um, that I have right here. Here's my color. So I'm aligning it right there and then I'm going to go ahead and pin it to my top. Put my pattern away. And I am pinning it to my top, the front of my shirt. And then now I am going to top stitch it on. And now remember, where we already top stitched on those curved edges, do not top stitch over that part again. Why? Because that's where your hands are gonna go in. If you do top stitch it, then it will just be a for looks pocket. I've done that before <laughs> by accident. And then it just stayed a for looks. You can always uh, seam rip, but I just left it for looks. But anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch at the top and then at the sides and at the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go do that. You can do a straight stitch on your sewing machine, you can do a twin needle, or you could do a cover stitch. If you have a cover stitch, it's really up to you. Um, because of the fact that this is not going to really stretch, a straight stitch will be just fine. Um, but if you wanted to do a zigzag stitch for the different look, you can do that as well. Um, so this is really up to you. So we're gonna go ahead and top stitch that. Uh, again, top, bottom, edges the flat edges not the curved and then the bottom all right friends my pocket it's top stitched on as you can see all the way around except for obviously at those spots where my hands are gonna go in so that's great so now I'm going to go ahead and put the front aside look at how cute and wait and now I'm gonna grab my back so there's two backs here's one and here's my other so what I'm gonna do is right here on my inside of my back, see my inside, this is my gap that's gonna have that opening in the back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hem that, but let me show you just to make sure so you hem the right side. So here's my top, there's my top. You can tell here's the neck, here's the shoulder seam, here's the armpit area, so we wanna make sure and here's this big part, space, which is my back, where my back opening is gonna be now. If you're doing, there's two options. There's the bigger opening and then the smaller opening. Um, depends on what you're doing, how big your opening is gonna be. Um, but anyway, the opening is gonna be in the back. And sorry, I've got fuzz. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab, turn it uh, wrong side up, and I'm gonna fold it half an inch, seam allowance, and I am going to hem that first. Okay, I'm going to hem it all the way around the back. So that way it has a nice, straight, nice edge when you're, ooh, do you see all the steam? When you're, um, when you put it on. You don't want, you know, I guess if you wanted to, you could leave it raw if that's the look you're going for. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hem it so it has a nice, um, just like hemmed edge right there. And I'm going all the way up that back that back um, side, okay? Oop, I'm losing my little paper. Um, and yes, so I'm going all the way up that edge. So I'm gonna show you, see how like that curved back right here, all that is gonna get hemmed. So I'm gonna go ahead and hem that. I'm do using, again, I'm using my cover stitch. You can do, um, it's not gonna stretch that much, so I think you know a straight stitch, a little bit bigger of a straight stitch should be fine. But if you just wanna be uh, sure, whatever, you can do a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. You could do a double needle. It really is up to you, whatever you wanna do. I am going to go ahead and do my um, uh, cover stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that all the way along to, I mean, half an inch, not two inch, 
half an inch allowance. I have hemmed my backs. Here's my one back hemmed. And as one of the things that I've heard many of you say is to always steam my seams. So make sure you steam that up so it's nice and even. And here's my other one, I already steamed it. So I'm gonna go ahead and place them face up. First of all, we're gonna do the neck. And here's my neck area and my shoulder area. And I'm gonna face the other one right on top of it where my neck area is. And I am going to match those up, okay? My neck areas. And I am going to pin it right there at the neck because I'm going to baste them together. Now, um, if you're doing the one that has the more opening, you'll have a bigger opening. Mine is just doing, I'm just doing the peekaboo poke, so you can see that only a little bit is showing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and place them right on top of each other, and I'm going to baste stitch right there. Basting stitch is just really a long stitch that is just going to keep the fabric from moving when you're going to sew it together. So when we're gonna sew our, our uh, hood or neckband on, um, it doesn't just wiggle on you and come off, which, you know, that's happened to me before. What am I doing? I'm trying to do it like my serger. So I'm like over there trying to press the foot down on that side, but that's not how my sewing machine works. So um, yes, so you wanna make sure that you base stitch so that way when you're going to put it together, it doesn't come apart. So that is what I'm doing. I'm just based stitching. It's just a loose stitch that is gonna come out. See, it's just gonna keep them together and it's gonna come out when I sew it. So I did that on the top and we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm gonna put my bottom right here. This is the bottom of my top. My side, my other side and my bottom. So I'm gonna match those up. Here's my one side, matching that up. Don't know where this blue thread came from. This is not, I haven't been using blue. And then I'm gonna match up the bottom. Now I'm really like, do you get sidetracked sometimes? I'm like so sidetracked right now, trying to think where that blue thread came from. What did I make that had that blue thread? Anyway, so I'm matching the raw edges of the, of the bottom of the shirt. So I'm matching the side edges and the bottom edge. It's what I'm going to hem at the bottom when I'm done. So if you want to go ahead, it's up to you if you want to go ahead and baste that. So I'm just going to go all the way around and baste it like a, like a, you know, down, over, up. I'm just basting that all on. Let me put a couple more pins so it doesn't come apart on me. Because when you're sewing it on, you want to make sure that all the edges are in there. Being that there's going to be three edges, you want to make sure that you don't just put you know, the front and back and not the uh, other piece. And then you'll be upset, then you'll have to redo it, which will be fine, but I'd rather just get it done on the first try, right? Yeah. And last edge. All right, so now it's basted it on. And now that it's basted it on, we're gonna go ahead and put our front and back together. My base stitch sometimes uh, tends to want to um, gather a little bit, so I'm like, no, don't gather, because I don't. When you do, when I do a basting stitch, uh, don't um, do a back and forth, back and forth stitch at the beginning or at the end, um, because you don't want it to like really stay. It's not gonna be a stitch that's gonna stay. It's something that's gonna come off after you sew it. Okay, so here's my back. It's already all basted on. So I'm gonna grab my top and I'm gonna do my shoulders first. So here's my shoulders with that neck basted on and I'm gonna grab my front. Here it is, my already done front. And I'm gonna put it right sides down on top of it and meet those shoulder seams right here. And right here. And sew them on. My uh, fabric is rolling a little bit. I've had a couple of questions about the different kind of cottons. Um, there's cotton lycra, there's cotton spandex. Um, I'm not an expert on the different uh, cottons. And actually, 
I've come to find out that some places uh, are different than others. Um, and I think it has to do with the weight of the cotton. Um, I'm going to show you there. These two are completely different uh, fabrics. Hold on one second. Let me go ahead and sew this one on while I'm talking to you. Um, yeah, so I've come to find out that there's different kinds. So this one, the, 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 the white background, it's a cotton spandex, so it's like a little flimsier and thinner, um, so it doesn't, it's not as thick. And this other one, the dark one, is a cotton lycra, which has got a good stretch, um, but it's thicker, and it feels more like a t-shirt material and than the cotton spandex. I think that... Hope that makes sense. Cotton spandex or cotton, uh, uh, yes. But there's different kinds of cotton lycra too. There's the thinner kinds. And honestly, I am not the best. I have to kind of actually make sure I look and um, depending on the store and whatever and make sure I'm, I'm getting the right thing. Sometimes I get nervous because I will order online and I'm like, I hope I get the right stuff. Um, so yes, so I, and I've come to find out that the cotton uh, lycra, the thicker t-shirt like material is a little bit more expensive than the other. So I usually kind of go by that as well. I don't know. That's not very much help. But anyway, now we're going to go ahead and sew up the sides. Um, and we're pinning those side seams. Make sure, remember when we get to the bottom, we're going to have those three seams because we're going to have the, uh, the two backs where you, where you, uh, um, basted them together. Yes, that's the word. And so we're going to do that side and this side. Um, what I do is when I'm ordering from online, I like to, from this one store, get a few samples of what their fabric feels like. Um, so like either if you buy samples or if I buy like usually, if it's something I really like, I'll go ahead and buy like a yard or two. But if it's something I don't really know that I'm gonna like or not I'll buy like a yard and see what it's like and if I like it then I'll make sure you have I and what I've done lately is I'll grab my phone and um, whenever I get a package which I have one waiting to be opened <laughs> whenever I get a package from fabric I'll go ahead and open it up and lay out all my fabric and it, its receipt or its envelope it came in so that I have the name or where it came from that way I know like later on, cause I literally, guys, I have so much fabric because <laughs> I love fabric. That way later on when I'm like, oh, where did this fabric come from? I can go back on my, and I have it in a different folder, um, fabric folder, and I can go back and look exactly where it came from. Now I haven't always done that. So I have a lot of fabric still in my stash that I have no idea where it came from or what it is. But this helps because then I know what it is and where it came from. Um, when you go to a store, uh, physical store you have to be a little bit more careful because in their receipt they do not put what kind of fabric it is so if you really want to know what kind of fabric it is you really need to like write it down yourself get the information from the bolt and and write it down so I'm just sewing those those edges together as I talk to you um, but yes I would just write it down from the bolt and then add it to your picture just um, uh, edit that picture and add that information on there or some people I know some people will do um, swatches on a book and actually that is a really good idea I'm not that organized I wish I was I love notebooks I love calendars I actually just uh, made one of my calendars because I I really need to get more organized but um, I love it and um, so people sometimes will do like a swatch and then write all the information on it. So that will work really great too. Really only way to get to know the fabric is to actually feel it. So that's what I do. But anyway, okay, so now my back and front are put together. Look at that, it's coming along. It's looking so good. So good. So now we're gonna go ahead and do either neckband or hood. I am doing the hood option. And so if you're doing your neck band, you can skip this little part because I'm going to put my hood together. I'm just turning it right side out. Look at that. I love that back. So cool. All right, my hood. So we're going to grab our hoods at liner, two liners together, two outers together. Here's my, this is going to be my outer 
or liner? I'm really not sure. I haven't made up my mind which one I want to be my outer and which one I want to be my liner. Um, I think I'm going to have this be my liner just because it's white and so the uh, out, the black is going to overpower that white if I have this be my outer. I don't know if that makes sense to you. It makes sense to me. So I'm just placing my hood right. This is my, let's say this is my liner. Putting right sides together on top of each other so they're just right on top of each other. And I'm going to sew the crown together. So like the top around the back, the part that goes over your head. Uh, let me pin it and then I'll show you. I'm going to go ahead and sew those two, those raw edges together only from the top of the head to the the bottom of the neck, the nape of the neck. So like this edge right here, all the way around to right here at the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you're going to do that as well to the liner. So, it, I mean, to the outer, um, the exact same thing. my hood is sewn together on the edges. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it right side out. And here's my liner. And here's my outer. I already um, did the same thing too. I sewed the edges together. Now I'm going to tuck this one into it and meet at the seam first, the top seam of the head and pin. We're just going to put them together. and. I always used to wonder like which one has to be tucked in, which one has to be out. It really doesn't matter because then when you turn it around, they're just going to be, one is going to be on one side, one's going to be on the other. So if you want one to be the outer, you'll obviously put that one on the top and then you want to be the liner, you put the other one on the bottom. So it's up to you. Now I'm just spinning along that face edge right here. So all the way around this edge, the one that goes right here at the face. And I'll show you in a minute once I'm pinned. Um, or clip you can pin or clip whatever you do I pin because I have this pins I have so many pins and I always feel like I already have pins so I want to spend money on clips and every time like you guys tell me all the time that pins or uh, clips are so much better clips are so much better life-changing and no doubt whenever I get that I do decide to go with clips I'm gonna be like oh my goodness why was I using pins all along so yes, I hear you, and yes, maybe eventually I will. Just um, I'm stubborn, I guess. So here it is. So we're sewing that raw edge, the face, where the face it was gonna line the face. We're gonna go ahead and sew those two outer and liner together, and um, here I'm serging it. If you're gonna use your sewing machine, I'd say you use a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. together my liner and my outer so now I'm gonna turn it right side out and you'll see so now you gotta decide which one do you want to be your outer and which one do you want to be your liner do you want the black or do you want the white whatever you want you go over so like this way if you want the white but I think I'm gonna want the black to be my outer and what I like to do is once I turn it well you can go ahead and top stitch the outer edge of your hood and when I do that, you don't have to, you can if you want. But what I like to do is I like to leave a little bit of the edge of the contrasting color of the liner. So like I, when I steam it, see my iron turned off again. When I steam it, I just leave a little gap there. A little gap there. Just a tiny little bit of the leftover fabric from underneath. You know, guys, I, I don't know. I'm gonna, I might be lazy, but I'm not switching my thread. So it's gonna have a white top stitching and it'll be just fine. It'll look cool. It'll be like a contrast. Do you switch your thread when you top stitch? I'm bad. Anyway, so see how it has a little bit of the white poking out. I just like how that looks. Um, if you don't want that, you don't have to do that, but I like to do that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and, so this is my hood, let me show you. There it is. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch around the face edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we're gonna go ahead and, and place our hood on. If you're doing a neckband, um, all you're doing is you're gonna go ahead and attach the neckband to the neck. Um, I am not doing a neckband today, so if you have questions about how to do a neckband, we have a great video on this YouTube channel about bands, bands, and more bands, and it shows you exactly how I do my neckbands, and actually it's a very helpful video, so go over there and watch that video um, so it can help you do the neckband, but we're going to go ahead and top stitch the hood, and then we're going to attach it. All right, friends, my hood is top stitched and ready to be put on my top. And um, so now we're gonna go ahead and put it on. I'm gonna mark my front and back just so I know where my hood is really going to be going. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna match my shoulder seams and I'm gonna go to the back and that's going to be my back. So I'm gonna mark it just a little notch just so I know where it is. And I'm gonna go to the front and mark it as well. So that way I know where my overlap is gonna go. Now for the hood, we're gonna overlap about two inches. So like here's my one side, it comes over this way, like off of the, the neckline and then comes over, the other one comes over this way off the neckline so they overlap two inches. So we're gonna go ahead and first, you need to figure out which one's your uh, outer and which one's your liner because you're going to attach your outer to the outer top of your shirt. So right sides together. And I'm gonna match that neck seam with the front, with the back seam of my shirt. So the neck seam of my hood with the back seam of my shirt and I'm going to go around the side edge attaching the pinning my hood to my top and when I come to the front where I marked it I'm going to go over there we go because we're going to overlap two inches it's right there. you want to make sure that you clip it nice and good and you shouldn't have to really stretch you might have to just stretch the shirt adjust a tiny bit, not very much at all. And now we're coming over to the other side with the hood on the other side. And then coming to the front and overlapping again. And you might want to do a little bit, a couple of pins right there where the overlap is so that it gets tucked in and not out. So I rather have a piece of the, let me show you, hold on. On the overlap, when you overlap, I rather have this piece, let me show you from the back, this piece kind of hanging out a little bit that you go ahead and eat it when you serge it on or sew it on and you can clip it on because then when you turn it, you don't want this piece not to be caught on there and like when you turn it, you don't want it to have like a gap. So I always make sure get on the side of caution, stack, uh, stay on the side of caution and just kind of pin it higher up a little bit. So that way it definitely, definitely gets cut on there. I hope that makes sense. So when I pin it, I have like the two points kind of out of my hood. See them right here? So when I surge them, they're gonna get eaten and in with my hood. So now my hood is attached. I mean, uh, pinned. Now I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. And I always start surging at the back seam, so I have that seam right there in the back. I don't want a seam in the front. So that's why I always start in the back. Make sure you pull it. Anything else. You're just sewing the hood liner, outer, and neck of your top. You're not, you gotta make sure that you don't sew anything else on, and your serger will make a gap right there. I've done it before. It's horrible. I hate it. Okay, remember to remove those pins as you go right here in the front. You don't want a pin stabbing you in the eye as it breaks and flies off the side. I've never had a pin stab me in the eye, but I've never had a pin before, and then I couldn't find it, and I was afraid it was gonna break my surgery. It was horrible. It's a horrible experience. And so I'm removing the pins. And um, so I'm going all the way around. There it is. It is on. My hood is on. Look at that. Cool, huh? So now I'm going to go ahead and steam it. 
If for some reason your hood did not go on as you expected and you have a little bit of a gap there, you can always do like a stay stitch right there and fix it up. It's really up to you. Um, so yeah, mine turned out great. Thank you. Look at that. It's looking good. We're almost done. Now, if you don't like to hem, uh, I mean, if you don't like bands, this is the top for you. It has no bands. All we're doing at the shoulder seam, I mean, at the arm is we're going to hem the arms. That's all we're doing. We're just hemming. So I'm going to go half an inch allowance into my arms and, and hem. And that's all we've got left to do. And then we're going to do that as well for the other side. And we're going to do that for our hem at the bottom. If you are doing, uh, I mean, when you're hemming, remember that you are going to be hemming those other um, in the back. You're going to be hemming the two um, overlaps. So you want to make sure that you hem both of them in there. And you, you um, went ahead and... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Basted them on, so you should be good. Sorry, something just fell behind me and I heard it and it distracted me, so I couldn't think of what the word was. Not that I need distractions, I get so lost sometimes. I can hear, um, so there's been construction going on around my neighborhood, and I can hear the construction crew's music going on. And the thing is, it's funny because it's kind of, it's not like right across the street. It's like farther down the street, but I can hear it all the way over here. But I mean, it makes sense, you know, like their construction tools are so loud. They need to have their music loud so they can hear it. So, but sometimes it distracts me when I hear their music. What's going on over there? Anyhow, so, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hem that sleeve. And let me go ahead, I'm going to do it on my cover stitch. I'm going to do it real quick because we're almost done. This is it. I'm just doing my hem and we'll be done. Are you excited to wear this new top out and about and get fit if you're going to work out? I have a love relationship with working out. I actually really like working out, but I actually don't like working out. Yeah. Figure that one out. I like working out and I like the feeling of working out, but I don't really like taking the time to work out. I have so much that I want to be doing, like sewing. Who has time to work out when they want to be sewing, right? I know you guys know my struggle. That is my struggle. I'd rather be sewing than working out. All right. There it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and steam my sleeve. And I am done. Look at it. Isn't it so beautiful? I just have to tuck in my serger tails. Sorry, I'm trying to grab my shoulder. Serger tails and I'm done. This is my top. Here's my peekaboo back. I'm going to take a picture so you guys can see it and I'll post it in the beginning of the video. I hope you enjoyed this sew along. I hope you liked it. I hope you make many more tanks with this pattern. Uh, please give me a like, um, give me a comment, share. Remember to subscribe and comment so you can enter our giveaway. Um, and also, if you're not part of our Facebook page, come join us at our Facebook and our Instagram page. We'd love to see your creations. Um, we'd love for you to go ahead and get inspired by other people's creations as well. Um, let me know if you have any questions whatsoever about anything I did in this project on this project uh, let me know what else you want me to see you want to see me sew up and I hope you have a great rest of your day bye